Jesus. We thank God for this choir. Come on, thank God for this choir. Amen. Sing it to the glory of God. Amen. Sing it. Sing it the gospel and the song. We thank God for, for all of them, our musicians. Thank God for, for all of them. Amen. We honor the Lord today. We thank God for Jesus. Shed blood on the cross. His blood that washes and cleanses us from all of our sins. We are so glad that Jesus Christ went to an old rugged cross. He hung, bled, and died. That we might have the right to the tree of life. Didn't have to do it, but he did die. The Bible says... They put him in a borrowed tomb at early Sunday morning. He got up with all power in his hands. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds my future. Life is worth the living just because he lives. Got it from the grave, went back to his father. One day he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. We'll be caught up to meet him in the air. And so shall we forever be with the Lord. Isn't that good news? That's, that's good news. We thank God for the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. To all of these uh, preachers who are assembled, God bless you. To uh, all of the officers and members of a great Bethel church. And uh, we thank God for all our musicians. Again, to all those who are watching live stream, uh, even if my, my mom may be watching, amen. I uh, want to greet my mother, amen. Uh, and to all of these ushers, these doorkeepers, God bless you today. Uh, if you're turning your Bibles to 2 Kings, the fourth chapter, we want to use as our text uh, the uh, seventh verse. 2 Kings 4 and 7 houses our text. And I'll, I'll, be, I'll be, uh, be trying not to be so long. I know we still have a couple of things to do, but pray, pray for the preacher. Amen. Amen. Uh, 2 Kings 4 and 7. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for uh, this preaching moment. God, uh, bless your people. Encourage their hearts. And we thank you for signs and wonders that shall follow your word. Save and heal and deliver. Set free. God, you know I need you to help me to preach. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we do greet Mother Bird. God bless you, Mother Bird. And to the First Lady of Greater Bethel, Reverend Gloria Red. Amen. Amen. 2 Kings, the 4th chapter and the 7th verse. She went and told the story to the man of God. He said, go sell the oil and make good on your debts. Live, both you and your sons, on what's left. I want to preach for a little while from uh, the topic. And God shall supply all your needs. And God shall supply all your needs. Uh, we started preaching about the blessings of God a couple of weeks ago, and we uh, talked about and preached from the theme God has determined that you are already blessed. And I did talk about it in Sunday school this morning. Those who were in Sunday school this morning at 8.30, we did talk about uh, the fact that God has determined that we are already blessed. How many know that when you woke up early this morning, you were already blessed? When you went to bed last night, uh, you were already blessed. And I, I just believe, I'm just crazy enough to believe uh, that God is determined to bless us. I believe that God wants me, you to be blessed even more than we want his blessings. And we talked about how Balak uh, tried to get 
Balaam to curse the people of God. Uh, but when Balaam went to God, God told him, you can't curse that people uh, because they are already blessed. And right now you need to tap your neighbor and tell them uh, you can't be cursed because you are already blessed. Come on, come on, tap them, remind them today uh, that you are already blessed. I, I don't care what's going on in your life right now. You, you got to understand uh, that you are already blessed. And then last week we looked at the prayer of Jabez. And you remember that prayer. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Uh, that you would enlarge my territory, enlarge my borders, and be with me, and keep me from evil. And at the end of the prayer, God answered that prayer. And uh, the, the scripture says, and God granted that which he requested. And we know that we serve a prayer answering God. How many know that prayer changes things and prayer changes situations? How, how many know that you are here today because somebody prayed for you? They had you on their mind. They took the time and prayed for you. And we know that we are recipients of answered prayer. And the thing about prayer is that God may not answer when you think he ought to answer, but how many know that we serve an on time God? Yes, he is. Sometimes you have to wait on him, but there's blessing even in waiting because uh, the Bible says that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. When you get tired of waiting, I've learned you have to wait some more. And when you get tired of waiting some more, you've got to wait some more. And when you get tired of waiting some more, you've got to wait some more. But how many know that God is still an on time God? Yes, he is. Come, come on, give somebody a high five and tell them he's an on time God. The thing that I love about God, and we sing that great hymn of our church, uh, great is thy faithfulness. Oh, God, our Father, uh, there is no shadow or turning with thee. Thou changes not uh, thy compassions, they fail not as thou hast been, uh, thou forever shall be. God is a faithful God. Uh, Hezekiah Walker picked that up and uh, penned the song Grateful is our God. How many know that our God is a faithful God? Grateful is our God. I'm reaping the harvest God promised me. I'm taking back what the devil stole from me and I rejoice today for I shall recover it all. Oh, come on, tap somebody. Tell them I'm going to get it back. Whatever the devil stole from you, you are going to get it back. God has this way of returning your stuff back to you. It doesn't belong to the devil. That's your stuff. And you ought to get to a point where you claim that the God we serve is faithful and he will return that which the devil stole from us. And one of the areas that God is faithful in particular is that we know that God is a God of provision. And when you look at that word provision, understand that there are three things in particular that we ought to be grateful for that God is faithful toward us. First of all, God promises to put food on our table. Hasn't God been faithful in that? As I look around the church today, 
I can see that there is food on our table. And we are so blessed that not only is food on our table, we have food in the cupboard. And even when we don't want to eat what's in the house, but we say, I don't want what's right here in the house. God gives us provision to go and buy whatever we want to eat. Oh, come on. How many know that God is faithful? Put food on our table. But not only has he put food on our table, he gives us a roof over our head. He gives us shelter and he gives us clothes. Now, I don't know if you're going to be rich or not. I can't make that promise to you. I don't know if you're going to be so wealthy uh, that you can just have all of your bills paid and you don't have to worry about uh, anything in your life. Uh, I don't know if you're going to live in a mansion. Uh, I don't know if you're ever going to live in a million dollar home. Uh, and I don't know if you're going to ever drive a luxury car. Uh, uh, because for some of us, uh, if it started this morning, uh, it was a luxury car. Uh, I don't know if you ever drive a Lamborghini or a Bentley. Uh, I don't know if you ever get that far. Uh, but I know that God continues uh, to put food on my table. Uh, he puts a roof over my head. Uh, and he put clothes on my back. Uh, and so David said, I once was young, but now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. That's because God has been faithful to each and every one of us. So when I was a new pastor, I should say, a newly appointed pastor, when I was a young pastor, Sister Vaughn, when I was a wet behind the ears pastor, Sister Youngblood, one of the areas that I was afraid, that I was nervous, that I was intimidated to preach or even to teach about was the area of money. Uh-oh. I was intimidated. I was scared to talk to God's people about money. I felt then like I sometimes feel even now that if I began to talk about money to church folk, eyebrows would be raised. They would begin to clutch their pearls. They would moan and groan. And they would be offended by the pastor talking about money. I really don't always understand that thinking because what I know today is that everybody under the sound of my voice wants some money. Oh, y'all not going to say amen to that? Oh, come on. You know you want some money. Ain't nobody I know turning down a chance to get more money. More money. More money. I know in the Matthew 16 and 33 it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Yes, the kingdom should be first. When it comes to my time, I should give God my time. I should put God first and give him all of my time. I should give him my talent, whatever gift God has gifted me. I ought to give that gift back to God. And yes, when God blesses me with money, I ought to give back to God what God has entrusted me with and I was intimidated in my early ministry to talk about money but can I tell you something today can I make you 
confession today. I was tempted. I was intimidated early. But I'm not now. I know that I should be talking about money. And you should be glad that I talk about money. And how you can be blessed in your finances. Lord, help me today. I know I'm not going to get a whole lot of amen. But that's all right. I don't apologize for it. I'm willing to take the heat. Some of y'all can't look at me now in my face, but that's all right. I'm willing to take the heat. I'm willing to risk the eye rolling. I'm willing to risk the sucking of the teeth. I'm willing to risk it all. I'm willing to risk the murmuring under your breath and the hunching your neighbor under the pew. I'm willing to risk all of that because today I'm clear about my journey and I'm clear about my mission. My mission is to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I'm called to preach the word in season and out of season. And when I came here to Greater Bethel, I came preaching and teaching about the blessedness of tithes and offerings. And whenever the bishop seems feel, 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 feel free to fit or to send me somewhere else, wherever I go, I'm convinced in my sanctified mind that I'm still going to preach the blessedness of tithes and offerings. Oh, come on, if I can get two or three witnesses here, why don't you shake somebody's hand like you're going to shake it off and tell your neighbor, you can't be God giving no matter how hard you try because giving is worship. Oh, yes, it is. Giving is worship. It always bothers me. Whenever you have another uh, worship service uh, and the person who is the worship leader, uh, when it comes to giving, says, uh, uh, now we're going to take a station break. Uh, uh, now is the part of service uh, uh, that everybody can be a part of. Uh, uh, well, excuse me. Uh, you mean that it could took the worship of giving uh, to get you involved? With worship, what you've been doing since we had the call to worship, what you've been doing since you woke up this morning, what you've been doing when you drove across town, what you've been doing when you took your favorite seat on your favorite pew, you ought to have been worship. And when it comes to giving God, a giving is a part of worship. If I remember right uh, we sing it every Sunday uh, all things come of thee oh Lord uh, and of thine own uh, have I given thee uh, how many know that God is in the blessing business uh, uh, so God says uh, uh, give and it shall be given unto you uh, and y'all going to help me uh, a good measure uh,
until I get it. Ha! Because I believe some things about God. Ha! I believe that God is a loving God. Ha! I believe God is a God of mercy. Ha! I believe God is a God of grace. Ha! I believe that God is a God of truth. Ha! I believe that God is a God of power. Ha! I believe that God is a God of salvation. Ha! I believe that God is a God of deliverance. Ha! And I believe that God is a God of ha! provision. Ha! Philippians 4.19 says, ha! Of a God shall supply ha! all of my need ha! according to his riches ha! in glory. Ha! And when it comes to provision, ha! But there are some words that kind of stick out. Ha! Uh, one word is forethought. Ha! Uh, God was already thinking ahead of you ha! concerning what you needed. Ha! Even before you thought it, ha! Uh, God already knew it. Ha! And all you've got to do now ha! is praise God ahead of time. Ha! Because you know that God ha! has already gone before you. Ha! He already knows what you need. Ha! And if you praise God like you know God, ha! God, uh, God is able today ha! to move your blessing ha! a little closer, ha! a little faster. Ha! So I'm glad today ha! Uh, that God sees ahead of me. Ha! Uh, but not only that, ha! Uh, God has foresight. Ha! Uh, God knows what I need ha! Uh, when I need it. Ha! And when God knows that I need it, ha! he's able to bless me. Ha! Another word is forecast. Ha! And I don't know about you, ha! Uh, but I watch the weather ha! every morning ha! and every evening ha! because the weatherman is going to come ha! and he's going to make a forecast. Ha! He's going to tell us ha! to the best of his ability ha! what the weather is going to be. Ha, on tomorrow ha, but I'm glad today ha, that because I belong to God ha, a God sends out a forecast ha, and the forecast is ha, I'm going to bless you ha, when you woke up early this morning ha, I'm going to bless you ha, as you go through your day ha, I'm going to bless you ha, I'm so glad today ha, Drake ha, and Drake said ha, a God's plan ha, and I heard this week ha, that Drake went into a McDonald's ha, and he gave two waitresses ha, a ten thousand dollars each ha, because I know that morning ha, they didn't know what was ahead of them ha, but by the time the day was over ha, they were holding ten thousand dollars All I have left 
vessel that she could find brought it in the house her and her sons sent them down started pouring oil and the bible said the oil from her vessel started pouring into the other vessels I'm telling you today your paycheck is your vessel and if you take your paycheck and pour into every empty vessel God will multiply it God will increase it God will give you more how many know that little becomes much in the master's hand can I get a witness here well Billy Preston said nothing from nothing leaves nothing and the reason some of us don't have because you don't give nothing but if you give unto the Lord God will give it back right back to you the Bible said that the woman had enough to pay all of her bills but then the man of God say taste what's left and do whatever you need to do because God is not just a God of enough
And when she obeyed, God worked the miracle. Now, now we're going to pray, but this is what I want you to make up in your mind. That if you are not a tither, you're going to make up in your mind and begin to tithe. Because you've got to open that flow. You've got to open up that flow. So you have to make up in your mind, well, God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to prove you. And see if you won't open the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing. I'm going to prove you. Now understand that God knows what's in your bank account. Why are you acting like God don't know how many bills you have? That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. He knows better than you know. That's right. What you owe. But I'm believing the day by, by, by the grace of God. I'm believing the day that God's going to pour you out a blessing. He's going to bless you financially. In the name of Jesus, God, thank you. Thank you, God. Come on, touch and agree. Give that hand a little squeeze and agree with that hand right now. Agree with that hand right now. I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know how it's going to get to you. But I believe it's on the way in the name of Jesus. Come on, if you believe that, thank God right now. Tell Jesus, tell the Lord, thank you. If you believe that, tell the Lord, thank you. Tell him, thank you, God. Thank him ahead of time. Believe it's already done. In the name of Jesus. You know, there's a whole lot of stuff we need. A whole lot of stuff. But sometimes it's real simple. We need some more money. That's real simple. And you can't be afraid to ask God for what you need. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for the lesson that we learned from the widow and the, and the borrowing of the vessels and poured her oil into empty vessels until they were all full that she was able to go out and pay all of her debt and then she was able to go out and live off of what was left so God thank you that you are the God of provision and as we stand here God you know what we need you know what creditors are knocking on the door but God, we claim today that you're going to give us, send us more than enough. That we'll be able to go out and testify. We'll tell somebody about the great things you have done for us. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. And we praise you. And we give you glory. If there's sickness on this altar, God, touch right now. Bring healing in the name of Jesus. If a mind is troubled, God, 